A sphere of light thrust from between the fabric, followed by Claire's opened palm. The cloak raced her through that darkness, unraveling to spew her forth. The glow from the light exposed the rocky surfaces speeding by. Her legs were released to drop for the tunnel floor. When her feet landed, she was forced into a stumbling run. The cloak flapped about and swept behind her. Using her other arm to work in tandem with her legs to gain balance, she willed herself to hold the sphere of light straight ahead. Darting her eyes around, waiting for the cloak to fasten itself around her neck, there were no offshoots, no sudden drops, no quick ascent. The tunnel extended into a wide curve to the left, but she couldn't tell if there was a shallow descent or if this sensation was from her upper body still leaning a bit too far forward. All she kept telling herself was to keep going. Don't stop running. Distance. Get plenty of distance from them all. The voice. The big face. Teok. The community members. The hot spring. The temple. The river. That strange village. This whole country. She didn't know where she was, but Samson chose to flee through these tunnels. The community members arrived at that hot spring from somewhere. She just had to keep going. Caves eventually ended. She just had to follow the air, search for a breeze. Had the sun risen yet? Find the light. Escape this place. Get back. Back to the agency. Tell them the mission was a bust. Tell them whatever Samson accomplished, he took Imala with him. That simplified things, because it was out of her hands now. Well, for the time being anyway. The agency would send her again, or perhaps somebody else. Right now though, escape. Take her knowledge and run. She was able to entertain her thoughts, because the tunnel kept winding its way to some place. Her body flinched before she could register why, but then her foot met nothing but air. The light in her palm showed her a shape of darkness ahead, but she was already diving into it. Dropping, her breath caught in her throat. Her arms floated upward, and all she heard was the ruffling of her cloak above. Some endless trench, a vast cavern, some type of pit. She thought to throw her arm downward, positioning the light underneath her to expose what waited below, but her feet met something solid. She collapsed with a grunt. Her palm slapped upon that hard surface, putting the light out. She coughed, wondering if her forehead hurt because she bashed it against the stone she was lying against. Before she lifted herself, she considered the rate of her fall. If it had really been that fast, or if she had even fallen far at all. Yet to come to a conclusion, she heard someone speak. Here, this should help. A source of light bloomed ahead in the distance, giving her eyes something to grasp. Another, just like it, bloomed to the right a pace. One sprang into existence to the left of the first. From those three, a series of lights ignited in either direction making their way from that distant point to curve around and establish themselves near her. They had formed an uneven circle, exposing the walls surrounding this large space. The floor dipped and rose in places, but there was a line of darkness stretching from the left side, across the center, and all the way to the right. This gash split the walls to continue to some unknown parts of these depths. As wide as it was, it looked to totally separate this half from the other. Her frantic taking in of all of these details brought her to a point along the left side of the gash. The lights were bright, but she still had a hard time making out what was brought to her attention. It looked to be a bridge of some sort, made out of wood. That could have been important, but at the moment, she pushed herself up and got to her feet. Turning around, she was facing a solid wall. Looking up, she saw the end of the tunnel she fell from. She hadn't fallen far, but it was still out of reach. That was, if she would try to reach it the conventional way. 
However, she had no intention of going back the way she came. After all, came that same voice. I helped you before. She spun to her right, seeing movement along that far wall. A couple of the lights revealed a hole level with the chamber floor. Someone was stepping out of it. She remembered catching a glimpse of this person just before escaping, wrapped in her cloak. This was the one who was standing at the mouth of the tunnel, a member of the community. She extended her right hand out to the side, calling forth the ghostly blade to her fingers. The community member stopped and waited. When the blade solidified, she simply wrapped her fingers around it, but didn't change her stance. You and I chose different paths in the arcane arts of summoning, the community member said, but I bet there is knowledge we both share. He flung his left arm forward, thrusting his open palm toward her. She saw some type of flash, and that was it. A larger flash struck the space between them. The entire chamber was gripped by white light for a split second. Claire shielded her eyes as pieces of dark clouds swelled from the air and stirred about each other. Streaks of energy danced and sparked in random intervals among this gathering. The chamber walls were caught by each flash, throwing shadows in all directions. Are you going to call upon yours? The community member asked. An elemental, Claire thought, watching the clouds swell and ignite from within with those bolts of hot silver. Hating that she felt tricked into doing this, she extended her left hand anyway, palm outward. A sphere of red light bloomed near her skin and then snapped out of existence. There beside the angry clouds, a large sphere of light came forth. The community member had already lowered his arm and watched the sphere grow in size, lending extra light to the chamber. Ah, he responded, raising both arms. Now that's more like it. As he lifted his hands above his head, all the conjured lights attached to the chamber walls dimmed until they went out. Darkness raced inward, but was kept at bay by the flame elemental's red glow. The storm clouds continued igniting from within, capturing quick shots of the nearest wall and the uneven textures of the floor. Claire ignored the process of her summoned being and glared between both elementals at the community member on the other side. He was staring right back at her. The storm elemental seemed to have reached its desired size. There was no discerning shape to it. The clouds formed and evaporated while moving in some random cycle. They never exceeded beyond a three-foot diameter. Mostly, they climbed to a height of about seven feet and then fell back down, growing too heavy to float any further. The red sphere beside it was already blowing itself out. When its edge met the storm, there was no response. Her elemental woke from its fetal position and stood at its full height. With its toes hovering a few inches off the ground, Claire noticed both elementals were similar in stature. How lovely, the community member commented. He was studying her summoned aid, but then rolled his eyes back to her. So, you actually will your elemental to take on a human form, and a female at that. It's entirely unnecessary, but at the same time, it's quite charming. I suppose our elementals might tell a lot about ourselves, huh? Looking at yours, I wonder, did you mean for it to look like you? He crossed his arms and studied the elemental more. Kind of regal, but more feisty, I would say. A warrior's elegance. Proud, strong, the alluring shape of femininity. Darting his eyes back to Claire, he asked, Is that what you look like underneath that cloak? Claire didn't answer. She just wanted him to make his move, or she would have to initiate this. There were no sounds coming from the two tunnels she knew about. How far had she gotten? Since he was in the same tunnel, how did he come from another location? How many times did those tunnels intertwine? She began her getaway, closed up within her cloak. However many seconds that passed during that time, 
she could have skipped several offshoots before she was on her feet. I wouldn't doubt it, the community member continued. Women like to think highly of themselves. Noticing the look on Claire's face, he added, Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this to be crass. I have a real reason as to why I think that. He looked at his own elemental. When you look at mine, what do you think? That I'm scatterbrained? Or that I don't put much stock in appearance? Maybe I'm more purpose-driven. She had already looked him over, but it was then that she considered the reason his entire torso, arms included, was wrapped in what looked like bandages. The top of his head was also covered. One strip went over his nose, and several strips covered his entire jaw, all the way down his neck. Two things came to mind. The first was what the voice said about those who participated in the rings, that the more payments they took in, the more they cursed their bodies. He could have been hiding his marred skin or disfigurements. The second thing was how all of the community members differed from Taek. He had chosen a piece of armor to hide his ethereal arm. Was this man's entire torso now ethereal? He was wearing a pair of baggy trousers, so she assumed he had only gotten so far in the rings. The front half of either of his feet protruded from underneath the hems. From this distance, she couldn't make out any blemishes or wounds to show the extent of his curse. Samson, he started again. Now he's a lot like you, I figure. He raised his left hand to be level with his shoulder. Extending his index finger, he began twirling it around. The storm elemental floated away from the other. Claire watched it, on the verge of willing her elemental to attack the man. Its fiery eyes were already focused on him. The storm clouds drew closer to the wall and then curved around to head back toward Claire's elemental. As it moved, the clouds swirled about like a slow-moving tornado. Makes sense, the guy continued, seeing as you two know each other. Both went through similar teachings in the arcane. That's wrong, Claire amused, still watching the storm clouds nearing her elemental. With a few feet left between them, the storm clouds curved around and went back in the other direction like before. The community member was still twirling his index finger. What did he tell you? Claire asked. About what? He asked. His knowledge? Heh. He mostly agreed with everything Asham said to you and his woman. So, she thought, this guy heard all of that too? But it wasn't like he showed us everything he could do, the bandaged man said. Not until he fled from here. What do you mean? Claire asked, the storm clouds returning to sweep alongside her elemental before curving away again. He demonstrated knowledge of being able to call upon the wind, the community member answered. But it was only revealed to us that he could do something more when he betrayed our trust. He kept twirling his finger, but when the storm clouds neared her elemental, they didn't curve away this time. Sweeping past, they came between Claire and her aid. Then they curved around to go back the other way, passing on the other side of the elemental. Once they arrived on the left side, they passed between it and Claire again, repeating their circular pattern. All the while, they spun in their slow, tornadic dance. You mean, she responded, remembering what the voice had said, the projection. That wasn't a summoned elemental you saw, he reassured her. Couldn't you feel it? Or at least you could tell just by looking. It was true. Even though it looked like an elemental of wind, even though the eyes were just shadowed pits in the face, she knew it was Samson. Before he left us, he continued, we thought he called forth an elemental. It rose up out of the hot spring as though that was where it came from. Then it stepped down and surrounded him. After that, it dove back into the hot spring with him inside. You should have seen it, that thing. It looked just like him, just his form. He pointed his other hand toward her elemental, still focused on him, despite the storm clouds circling it. Just like you have here. 
Claire saw the quick gathering of energy just before a streak shot from his fingers. She grabbed the end of her cloak with her free hand as the streak passed between both elementals. Cutting off her view of all three figures, she saw a swell of light through the red fabric. Her forearm lay horizontal along the inside of her cloak, but the bolt of energy struck below it, pressing the loose material against her abdomen. Taking the blow, she was shoved off her feet to go sailing backwards. Landing on her back, she twisted to lay upon her right side. When she looked up, the storm clouds were almost upon her. Glancing toward her elemental, she confirmed that it was rushing toward the community member, hands full of flames. Then she balled herself up underneath her cloak. The storm clouds rolled on top of her, spinning and twisting. They threw bolts of energy down upon the garment. She felt each blow as a jab, thankful her cloak was able to cancel out the brunt of the impacts. Outside of the storm, she heard the community member's feet slapping upon the stone. Was he running away from her elemental? It was throwing those balls of fire, and they were crashing against something. Instead of him crying out in pain or grunting from being struck, he broke out laughing. Something collided with another thing. She heard searing heat and burning cloth. He was still laughing when something fell on the ground. Flames hissed and scraped at stone. He grunted at each impact, chuckling the whole time. Was that his bare feet sliding along the ground, or... So, he suddenly blurted out among all the scraping and hissing, you really don't want to know how to go beyond yourself? Was he... No way, Claire gasped to herself, trying to ignore all the blows on the other side of her cloak. Was he really... Was he wrestling with my elemental? Being in contact with it? Now was her chance. She had intended to cause her elemental to self-destruct, but the community member trapping himself just helped her out that much more. He didn't see her grinning when the fire elemental brightened to a hot white. The whole chamber flashed and shook from the explosion. The wall of fire slammed against her, brushing over the cloak to race for the chamber wall. The stone underneath vibrated from the angry rush. She rode it out, listening for the moment when the explosion filled the entire chamber. There was a loud thump. The flames growled and twisted. She thought they would blow themselves out, but the growl turned into a roar. The vibration melted. She felt the heat lifting, chasing after the continuous rage. Rushing away, the only place to go was up. How high did this chamber reach? She rolled over, yanking her cloak along so that when she was on her back, it was underneath her. Her gaze pointed upward. She watched the top of the chamber boil with flames. The explosion gathered there and fought with itself. The monstrous growls told of a power she was well aware of, and that was just one elemental. It was true what this Asham guy had said, the intoxication of pulling from another realm, having the keys to that door. It made one wonder why there was a door in the first place. Yet, she knew. Even as the flames twisted and died, their growls subsiding had seared their strength into her mind. Maybe that's why her connection with it was limited. The chamber went dark and the last of the echoes dispersed into unknown depths. She lay there, her breathing easy, but it was the only sound there was, until she heard chuckling to her right. Rolling onto her side, she sprang to her feet, but remained crouched. Her body pointed toward the community member's mild glee. She thrust her right hand forward. Aiming her palm toward the sound, she called forth a small sphere of dim light and caged it within her fingers. The extent of its radiance exposed faint impressions of the surrounding jagged surfaces and that of the wall to her left. The community member was straight ahead. She had to assume what she was seeing was him. There was a mound of black along the chamber floor. Was he that color because he was burnt, or was it because he was still in the shadows? She remembered thinking half of his body was ethereal, but there was no glow like Taek's arm. The black mass 
even under the limited amount of light, was wiggling in time with his low chuckle. She splayed her fingers and then pushed the ball of light away. It floated across the space between her and this mangle of darkness, slowing down, its light swimming through the shadows, casting them aside. The community member was giving color. His bandages hadn't covered all of his face before. She was seeing the same pale tone to his skin. The first part of him to be revealed was the round shape of his head. He was bald, but now she was seeing the pock marks and lacerations along his scalp. The conjured light drifted over his face and slowed just above his chest. It was evident his nose was missing, but when she saw his chest, all those strange blotches and whelps. She was pulled from her observation when he lifted his right hand, placing it in the conjured light's path. The dim sphere met his palm, and he curled his fingers slightly, but didn't close them around it. Here, he said, allow me. Claire looked up when the surrounding darkness was pushed aside. All those lights from before brightened to reveal the chamber once again. Settling into their previous radiance, she just knew they were the same lights from before, and they were even glowing from the same positions. This guy... He had mounted these lights at some point in the past so that he could call upon them at any time. Are you worried about me? He chuckled, drawing her focus. He was still lying on his back. The combined radiance revealed the ashes scattered along the floor near him. Had to be all that was left of the bandages and trousers he wore. He was naked now, but it wasn't like she was concerned about that in the least. What she took in were the lumps on his chest and the red stripes running down his stomach, the large patches of misplaced skin. All of it was charred. The cooked strips and torn flaps of flesh along his arms, the exposed joints of his fingers, the gashes in his thighs. The elemental had exploded right in front of him, yet he was giggling. He was still alive. You don't have to be, he said, closing his roasted hand over her conjured light snuffing it out. Because I've gone so far into the rings. He grunted as he lifted himself and then hunched forward. His back wasn't burnt, but all the same types of whelps and craters covered most of the skin there. He twisted enough so that he could look back at her. She didn't even flinch when she saw that the left side of his jaw was burnt away, exposing his teeth. A dark cut reached up toward his eye and ran along his temple. Despite these disfigurements, he was able to form a smile. I've cursed my body to the point that I don't feel pain anymore. So yeah, he shrugged. I'm not worried, because I'll give it all up anyway. With his right hand, he indicated himself with a slow sweep. All this flesh. He twisted it all the way around and sat upon his knees, facing her. But Samson, did he fool the rituals? Or did they work with him? His deep knowledge of the arcane. Claire forced her gaze not to stray when she noticed several of the lights near the other tunnel going out. The way it happened, he continued, his eyes growing wider at his supposed revelations, him merging with the elemental or whatever it was. A few more lights went out, but they were secondary to the amount of shadows swallowing the chamber behind him. Was that what he was trying to do? Force the rituals? He questioned, calling forth the end result somehow. There at the front of this dark wall, a small set of eyes emerged. And, he surmised, he tried to put himself in it. The set of eyes loomed over him without the hint of a body supporting them. It was as though the surrounding shadows were being personified with all this talk of elementals and the relative arcane arts. The eyes were glaring down at him, having settled in place above. Or maybe he's stuck now? He chuckled. Instead of fooling the rituals, he shot forward, placing his hands upon the stone in front of him. The rings punished him. His smile vanished when his head bucked backward and his upper body lurched forward. Claire realized she was more surprised by the way he collapsed, face first, his arms flapping about as though broken. 
No longer laughing, he lay on his stomach, but his legs were still bent like before, only spread apart to allow his upper body to fill the space between them. There was no response from him. The set of eyes floated forward. Below them, a piece of the shadows emerged, stretching out like a shaft. It bent in the middle, placing the end upon the guy's lower back. This was the only means she could give herself away, not just by stepping out of the shadows that concealed her, but by contrasting a part of her against a lighter surface. Claire could clearly make out the shape of Imala's foot upon the guy's pale-skinned back. You might be completely numb from the head down, Imala said, but that doesn't mean you're invincible. Claire thought she could see a smile form below those eyes. Imala continued, I can see you shaking. He was still lying face down, arms splayed in awkward positions. Claire tried to catch any subtle movements. Maybe the only way Imala actually knew he was shaking was because she was feeling it through the sole of her foot. The body of darkness shrank inward, bringing definition back to that section of the chamber. Like a curtain, it pulled away from the conjured lights along the wall near that tunnel entrance. Last, it slipped away from Imala's foot, up her leg, and from around her body. To Claire, it looked as though the tunnel was slurping those shadows back into its gullet, leaving Imala's nude form above the crumpled community member. Taking her foot from him, she lifted her gaze to Claire, who finally stood upright. Imala was grinning, but Claire didn't return the greeting. Was it him? she asked. What? Imala asked. Samson, Claire said. Was that really him, or... Imala's grin widened. He's waiting for us, she snickered. Thought you might get lost, so... Waiting where? Claire asked. At the end, Imala said, and started to turn away. She beckoned Claire with her hand. Come on, let's get out of here. She headed toward the tunnel entrance. Claire made a quick glance toward the wooden bridge crossing the gap. That side of the chamber suddenly dimmed. She blinked, thinking she had to adjust her eyes, but then she saw all of those conjured lights along that far wall shrinking inward. Looking around, all the lights were fading, inviting the shadows back. Imala didn't react to this. This was no surprise. Claire started after her, but when she passed alongside the defeated community member, she could hear his breathing. Again, she tried to tell if he was shaking or not, but the chamber was falling further into gloom. Perhaps he was finally succumbing to the injuries her elemental inflicted, she figured. Leaving him there, she hurried after Imala and entered the tunnel.